Good morning. As of today, if you're visiting a health care facility in B.C., you will need either a flu shot or you'll have to wear a mask. For more on this story, let's go live to Greg Harper, who is at Vancouver General Hospital. Greg. Good morning, Jody. Yeah, the flu season is here, and it's also day one of a policy. You will need to wear one of these when entering a hospital, a care home, a clinic, any other health care facility, unless you have had uh, the flu shot. And this policy will be in place, uh, well, now until the end of March. This also goes for health care workers as well. The second year in a row for them, uh, they actually uh, had to uh, go online and register, indicating they have had their flu shot. Otherwise, they have to wear a mask. You may remember uh, last year, the union representative presenting health care workers filed agreements on this, but an arbitrator ruled in favor of the policy. So again, you'll have to wear a mask unless you've had a, a flu shot when entering a health care facility. If you're interested in getting your flu shot, uh, you haven't had it yet, uh, for uh, information on locations, you go to immunizebc.ca. Jody? All right, thanks very much. Greg Harper reporting live this morning from Vancouver General Hospital. A prominent member of the local Iranian community has been identified as North Vancouver's first murder victim of the year. 69-year-old Rostam Pulad Noshirovan was shot and killed at his home on St. George's Avenue Saturday afternoon. The victim did not have a history with police, but investigators believe the attack was targeted. A gray or silver import style car was spotted driving away from the scene. Friends identify the 69 year old as a prom uh, promoter of Persian concerts who often sold tickets on his doorstep. American Thanksgiving weekend ended with some cross border solidarity. On both sides of the border, those against a radio station's plans expressed themselves. A few hundred people rallied in Tawasin and Point Roberts. They do not want a Richmond based Punjabi radio station to build five radio transmission towers on the U.S. side of the line. The station currently uses towers in Ferndale, not far from Bellingham. Demonstrators are worried about potential health impacts and interference with current transmissions. This radio station is broadcasting at the moment with towers from Ferndale in the U.S. And over the years, there have been complaints there. Uh, they want to increase the power that they're broadcasting with, and they've been refused because they, they don't want the complaints uh, to get even, even worse. Tawasin residents hope to raise $25,000 in case they need to file a lawsuit to prevent the towers from going up. The Victoria Clipper Ferry, which runs between Seattle and Victoria, made unusual news this weekend after a man reportedly tried to steal it. Seattle police say the boat was seen drifting close to Pier 69 on the Seattle waterfront yesterday morning. When a tugboat went to retrieve it, a man was found on board. SWAT team members eventually boarded and arrested the man. Police say he told officers he took the boat because he wanted to go west to West Seattle. They are still trying to determine how he managed to commandeer the ship. It's Cyber Monday, the day American retailers encourage you to go bargain hunting online. But online security experts warn if you want to take advantage of deals online, make sure you do so safely. You are discouraged from using your laptop in public places. Experts remind that you should also ensure privacy settings are secure on social media accounts and be wary of anyone calling your home, pretending to be from a local business offering you a special deal in your hometown. The things you buy online could soon be delivered by drones. Amazon hopes to have unmanned drones, which look like toy helicopters, deliver packages to your doorstep. They expect the drones will be ready within five years. They can only carry packages under five pounds, but Amazon says 90% of its deliveries weigh less than that. Can you imagine? One look at downtown Vancouver yesterday would suggest the Christmas spirit is alive and well in our city. The weather cooperated for the 10th annual Roger Santa Claus Parade. Way to go, Russell Kate. A crowd of about 300,000 took in the sights and sounds of the big event, including many happy young faces. The parade is typically the Vancouver Food Bank Society's biggest annual fundraiser. The parade will air this weekend on City and on Omni.